I didn't know we were going to hit on this, but here's your number one. And you don't have to say the band that we were mentioning, but who's your favorite Christian music artist of the 90s? <laughs> um, let's see. Yeah, it, it was DC Talk. They were my first mm-hmm. concert that I went to, man. My first mm-hmm. concert. Uh, my, my, now, I did not listen to Christian music my whole time in elementary school. So my first tape was Paula Abdul, Forever Your Girl. And so I played that thing out, man. I heard the straight up song mm-hmm. in a music class when I was in the fifth grade. And I was like, man, this song is awesome. My aunt sent me very close, very soon after I started listening to music in elementary school, my aunt sent me uh, Jesus Freak. And I didn't bust it out until God got a hold of my life. And I was like, all right, I'll listen to what Aunt Sharon sent. Bro, that album holds up. DC Talk wound up being the first concert that I ever went to, and I remember everything about it. Nice. Uh, what is your biggest pet peeve about how churches do marketing? Your marketing. Uh, biggest pet guy. peeve about how churches do marketing is they lead with the thing and they never lead with the need. You've got to lead with the need. Um, if you lead with the need and um, speak to the pain and the struggle that people are going through, that's going to be a much more compelling message than show up for divorce care or we're doing a marriage conference. Uh, You speak to the end result that they want to to achieve at the end of navigating that pain and you speak to the need that they're feeling, you'll do a much better job of getting people in um, because a lot of people don't feel they need Jesus. They don't feel that they have a need for uh, a deity in their life. And so when you speak to the need, you. If you speak to hurting people, uh, you're always going to have an audience. So speak to that felt need. Good. What is one thing that if churches would focus on, it would catapult their attendance and engagement? Man, that's going to be so dependent upon the context. And I'm not going to cop out and say Jesus, although I, I do think if, if you really ho- harness and preach Jesus, there's just no one like him. I mean, there really isn't. Um you know, the, the guy was so controversial that either people loved him or hate him. Uh, just who he was got him killed. So, I mean, that's somebody that you can't ignore. So I do think if you focus very, very strongly on the person and the character of Jesus, I think that would, that would be huge, but something more practical, I'm going to lean back on what I said, you know, biggest pet peeve. I'm going to say, Really focus on the needs of the community that you find yourself in. Really look at what um, secular companies are doing that are drawing people in. I think every church in Arizona should have a killer splash pad. I do. I think you should build an amazing splash pad on your church. I think you should put some mobile units uh, on your property and allow uh, restaurants to go ahead and lease those out. A coffee shop, a salad bar. A um, couple other things. And I think you should have that splash pad opened up each and every day. You would have more people on your property in one week than you've probably had in the last year. Just if you put a splash pad out. Let's go really practical. Just decorate really, really well for Christmas. You want people to look at your campus? Do a kick butt job on decorating your campus for Christmas. You will get people on your property every single night looking at your Christmas lights. Name a couple of churches that are doing marketing and communications well that we should be following. Well, um, let's see. I will say I I can give you one because I'm not as right now in this season of life. I'm not as focused on what is happening outside of the church that I go to just because of the season that I'm in. Um, Primarily that of just being a dad. And so I work. And then I come home and I hang out with the kids. So I'm not super, um, I'm not super uh, privy to what's going on. But I will tell you one thing: my church does really, really well. That um, I was proud to see them do well. I didn't have a part in this, um, and this is something that I really worked hard on. The staffs that I was a part of, they preach the announcements. So if you want to talk about doing marketing really, really well, preach your announcements. Get out on stage share stories about the things you want to call people to. Um, When you share a story, all of a sudden there's this emotional and relational connection that's made. And if the person is a good storyteller, people will start to see themselves in the story. And all of a sudden they start recognizing their individual needs and they start recognizing their individual um, 
perceived needs. And that draws them in to then say, you know what, I think I might check that out. So that's some internal marketing that I think uh, if a church does that well, awesome. All right, last one for you. What is something that you're seeing that churches are doing right in communicating that you're encouraged to see, want to see more of? Might be repetitive, but let's see if you have a yeah. different answer here. What I would love, I've seen uh, a couple churches do something similar to this, but not exactly the way I would want to do it. What I would love for churches to start doing is I would love for churches to start bringing the professionals in their congregation into webinars that are then marketed to the local community, uh, i.e. Facebook ads, i.e. TikTok ads. What would be fantastic? Let, let's go back to when COVID started lockdowns. What was something that every parent was faced with? And I'm asking you, Carl, what was something that every parent was faced with the second that lockdowns happened? Babysitting. Where do I, what do I do with my kids? If that's I exactly, still have to go to work, what do I do with my kids? That's exactly right. And many of those kids, the reason why you had to have them is because they were in school and the schools will shut, were shut down. I think every church, I think we missed the biggest evangelism opportunity of my lifetime. And I'm not exaggerating when I say that that's what I believe. I think we missed the biggest opportunity to evangelize through bringing in teachers who are in our congregation and bringing in moms and dads who are homeschoolers inside of our congregation. We missed the opportunity to put them in front of the community and saying, hey, we've been doing homeschooling for the last eight years. Here's what we have found has worked for our structure. Here is how we facilitate teaching sixth graders alongside second graders, bringing in public school teachers and private school teachers saying, hey, when we've got kindergartners, um, they've got a lot of energy. Here is how we allocate that energy. Here are some phrases that we use. Here's a chart that you can put up that the kids will respond to really, really well. But here are some obstacles that you need to be considerate of. I think that if the church began to start doing that with anything and everything, I think you would really see um, people's perception of maybe the church has something that I need. I think you'd see that raise. And I think you could you could expect a lot more attention and eyeballs on what you're doing as a church, mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to show up Sunday morning and plan your visit. Yeah. Well, man, always a pleasure. How can we follow you? How can we keep up with what you're doing? Well, I'd love to have you all go check out the Preaching Through podcast. So uh, Apple, Spotify, Google, just search for Preaching Through um, and you'll see it there. You'll see a picture of me with Luke and uh, it's sponsored by the Ministry Pass Network. So we're really happy uh, that Ministry Pass chose to sponsor the first 10 episodes. So you can go check them out too. Um, so that's how you can find us through the podcast. If you'd like to connect with me individually, the best place is to go to Twitter. I'm just at Dave Shrine. And so you can get my name and my spelling from the show notes here. So at Dave Shrine is how you can find me on Twitter. Just reach out and um, anything and everything you need, I'm, I'm, I'm available. Um, even though I'm not in full-time vocational ministry and communications anymore, I'm still very active in that area. And I still have a lot of things that I'm taking from the business world and translating and interpret, interpreting yeah. uh, for the church world. Yeah. Awesome. Dave, thank you so much. Really appreciate your time, man. Awesome. Thanks, Carl. Appreciate you, man.